Chiricahua. Chiricahua are a band of Apache Native Americans, based in the Southern Plains and Southwest United States. Culturally related to other Apache peoples, Chiricahua historically shared a common area, language, customs, and intertwined family relations. At the time of European contact, they had a territory of 15 million acres in southwestern New Mexico and southeastern Arizona in the United States and in northern Sonora and Chihuahua in Mexico. Today Chiricahua are enrolled in two federally recognized tribes in the United States, the Fort Sill Apache Tribe, located near Apache, Oklahoma with a small reservation outside Deming, New Mexico, and the Mescalero Apache Tribe of the Mescalero Reservation near Riadosa, New Mexico. The San Carlos Apache Tribe Arizona does have Chiricahua Apache people there also. The Chiricahua Apache, also written as Kirikagi, Apaches de Kirikahui, Chikahues, Chilicague, Chilicage, and Chiricahua, were given that name by the Spanish. The White Mountain Coyotero Apache, including the Sipicu and Bilas groups of the Western Apache, referred to the Chiricahua by the name Ha apostrophe I apostrophe Ha while the San Carlos Apache called them Hawk apostrophe AA which means Eastern Sunrise, comma, or people in the East. Navajo refer to the Chiricahua as Chizzy. The Chiricahua autonym, or name by which they refer to themselves, is simply Nd, Ni, Nend, Hend or Henda, the people, men, they never called themselves Apaches. The Chiricahua referred to outsiders, such as Americans, Mexicans or other Indians, as an E, Nda or Inda, Nda. This word has two possible meanings, the first being strange people, non-Apache people or enemy, but another being I. Sometimes it is said that all Apaches refer to the Americans and European settlers as Binda Lai, by apostrophe and dot d dot a. Lai, but this seems a name from Mescalero and Lipan Apache bands, as the Chiricahua bands called them da dot lai and, meaning blue slash green eye people or indaligai. Indaligan meaning white-skinned or pale-colored people or literally strange, non-Apache people, which are white-skinned. Ligay means it is white or it can be translated as it is pale-colored. The I on the end usually translates as the one that is, but in the context of human beings, can mean the group who are. Several loosely affiliated bands of Apache came improperly to be usually known as the Chiricahuas. These included the Chokonan, the Chien, the Nidna and Bidongahe. Today, all are commonly referred to as Chiricahua, but they were not historically a single band nor the same Apache division, being more correctly identified, altogether, as Central Apaches. Many other bands and groups of Apache and language speakers ranged over eastern Arizona and the American Southwest. The bands that are grouped under the Chiricahua term today had much history together, they intermarried and lived alongside each other, and they also occasionally fought with each other. They formed short-term as well as longer alliances that have caused scholars to classify them as one people. The Apachean groups and the Navajo peoples were part of the Athabascan migration into the North American continent from Asia, across the Bering Strait from Siberia. As the people moved south and east into North America, groups splintered off and became differentiated by language and culture over time. Some anthropologists believe that the Apache and the Navajo were pushed south and west into what is now New Mexico and Arizona by pressure from other Great Plains Indians, such as the Comanche and Kiowa. Among the last of such splits were those that resulted in the formation of the different Apache and Banswam the later Europeans encountered, the southwestern Apache groups and the Navajo. Although both speaking forms of southern Athabascan, the Navajo and Apache have become culturally distinct. The Tsokan and Apache division was once led, from the beginning of the 18th century, by chiefs such as Bago Cabazon, Rels, Posido Moraga, Arigalan, Tapola, Tpoca, Vivara, Miguel Merbona, Esquinilan, and finally Cochizand, after his death, his son Stizayand, later, Naish, under the guardianship of Cochise's war chief and brother in Lana Hilzai, and the independent chiefs Chihuahua, Alzana, Skinya and Pianzane, Chian people was led, during the same period, by chiefs as Juan Jose Compa, Fuerte also known as Soldado Fierro, Mangas Coloradas, Cuchillo Negro, Delgadito, Ponce, Nana, Victorio, Loco, Mangas, Nanda Apache people, in the meanwhile, was led by Maho and, after him, Mano Moca, Colto Amarillo, Luis, Lacheriz, Felipe, Natiza, and finally Ju and Goya Ale. After Victorio's death, Nana, Geronimo, Mangus and youngest Cochise's son Naish were the last leaders of the Central Apaches, 
and their mixed Apache group was the last to continue to resist U.S. government control of the American Southwest. From the beginning of European-American slash Apache relations, there was conflict between them, as they competed for land and other resources, and had very different cultures. Their encounters were preceded by more than 100 years of Spanish colonial and Mexican incursions and settlement on the Apache lands. The United States settlers were newcomers to the competition for land and resources in the Southwest, but they inherited its complex history, and brought their own attitudes with them about American Indians and how to use the land. By the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo of 1848, the U.S. took on the responsibility to prevent and punish cross-border incursions by Apache who were raiding in Mexico. The Apache viewed the United States colonists with ambivalence, and in some cases enlisted them as allies in the early years against the Mexicans. In 1852, the U.S. and some of the Chiricahua signed a treaty, but it had little lasting effect. During the 1850s, American miners and settlers began moving into Chiricahua territory, beginning encroachment that had been renewed in the migration to the southwest of the previous two decades. This forced the Apache and people to change their lives as nomads, free on the land. The U.S. Army defeated them and forced them into the confinement of reservation life, on lands ill-suited for subsistence farming, which the U.S. proffered as the model of civilization. Today, the Chiricahua are preserving their culture as much as possible, while forging new relationships with the peoples around them. The Chiricahua are a living and vibrant culture, a part of the greater American holy and yet distinct based on their history and culture. Although they had lived peaceably with most Americans in the New Mexico Territory up to about 1860, the Chiricahua became increasingly hostile to American encroachment in the Southwest after a number of provocations had occurred between them. In 1835, Mexico had placed a bounty on Apache scalps which further inflamed the situation. In 1837 Warm Springs Membrano's head chief and famed raider, Soldado Fierro also known as Fuerte was killed by Mexican soldiers of the garrison at Janos, and his son Cuchillo Negro succeeded him as head chief and went to war against Chihuahua for revenge. In the same 1837, the American John Johnson invited the copper mine Membranos in the Pinos Altos area to trade with his party had been placed with them. Johnson and his men opened fire on the Chien with rifles and a concealed cannon loaded with scrap iron, glass, and a length of chain. They killed about 20 Apache, including the chief Juan Jose Compa. Mangas Colorados is said to have witnessed this attack, which inflamed his and other Apache warriors' desires for vengeance for many years, held the survivors to safety and subsequently, together with Cuchillo Negro, took Membrino revenge. The historian Rex W. Strickland argued that the Apache had come to the meeting with their own intentions of attacking Johnson's party, but were taken by surprise. In 1839, scalp hunter James Kirker was employed by Robert McKnight to reopen the road to Santa Rita del Cabre. After the conclusion of the U.S.-Mexican War and the Gadsden Purchase, Americans began to enter the territory in greater numbers. This increased the opportunities for incidents and misunderstandings. Anyway, the Apaches, including Mangas Coloradas and Cuchillo Negro, were not at first hostile to the Americans, considering them enemies of their own Mexican enemies. Cuchillo Negro, with Ponce, Delgadito, Victorio and other Membrino chiefs, signed a treaty at Fort Webster in April 1853, but, during the spring of 1857 the U.S. Army set out on a campaign, led by Colonel Benjamin Ali de Bonneville, Colonel Dixon S. Miles and Col. William W. Loring, against Mogo Lone and Coyotero Apaches, Loring's Pueblo Indian scouts found out and attacked an Apache rancheria in the Canyon de los Muertos Carneros, where Cuchillo Negro and some Membrino Apache were resting after a raid against the Navajos. Some Apaches, including Cuchillo Negro himself, were killed. In December 1860, after several bad incidents provoked by the miners led by James H. Tevis in the Pinos Altos area, Mangas Coloradas went to Pinos Altos, New Mexico to try to convince the miners to move away from the area he loved and to go to the Sierra Madre and seek gold there, but they tied him to a tree and whipped him badly. His Membrino and Nanda followers and related Chiricahua bands were incensed by the treatment of their respected chief. Mangas had been just as great a chief in his prime, along with Cuchillo Negro, as Cochise was then becoming. In 1861, the U.S. Army seized and killed some of Cochise's relatives near Apache Pass, in what became known as the Bascom Affair. Remembering how Cochise had escaped, the Chiricahua called the incident cut the tent. In 1863, 
General James H. Carleton set out leading a new campaign against the Mescalero Apache, and Captain Edmund Sherland invited Mangas Coloradas for a parley but, after he entered the U.S. camp to negotiate a peace, the great Membrino chief was arrested and convicted in Fort McLean, where, probably on Gen. Joseph R. West's orders, Mangas Coloradas was killed by American soldiers. His body was mutilated by the soldiers, and his people were enraged by his murder. The Chiricahuas began to consider the Americans as enemies we go against them. From that time, they waged almost constant war against the settlers and the army for the next 23 years. Cochise, his brother-in-law on Ahilzai, Chihuahua, Skinya, Pianzane, Ulzana and other warring chiefs became a nightmare to settlers and military garrisons and patrols. In the meantime, the great Victorio, Delgadito, Nana, Loco, Young Mangus and other minor chiefs led on the warpath the Mimbranos, Chiricahua's cousins and allies, and Jula the Nanda. In 1872, General Oliver O. Howard, with the help of Thomas Jeffords, succeeded in negotiating a peace with Cochise. The U.S. established a Chiricahua Apache reservation with Jeffords as U.S. agent, near Fort Bowie, Arizona Territory. It remained open for about four years, during which the chief Cochise died. In 1877, about three years after Cochise's death, the U.S. moved the Chiricahua and some other Apache bands to the San Carlos Apache Indian Reservation, still in Arizona. The mountain people hated the desert environment of San Carlos, and some frequently began to leave the reservation and sometimes raid neighboring settlers. They surrendered to General Nelson Miles in 1886. The best-known warrior leader of the Renegades, although he was not considered a chief, was the forceful and influential Geronimo. He and Naish together led many of the resistors during those last few years of freedom. They made a stronghold in the Chiricahua Mountains, part of which is now inside Chiricahua National Monument, and across the intervening Wilcox Plateau northeast, in the Dragoon Mountains. In late frontier times, the Chiricahua ranged from San Carlos and the White Mountains off Arizona, to the adjacent mountains of southwestern New Mexico around what is now Silver City, and down into the mountain sanctuaries of the Sierra Madre. There they often joined with their Nidni Apache camp. General George Crook, then General Miles Troops, aided by Apache scouts from other groups, pursued the exiles until they gave up. Mexico and the United States had negotiated an agreement allowing their troops in pursuit of the Apache to continue into each other's territories. This prevented the Chiricahua groups from using the border as an escape route, and as they could gain little time to rest and consider their next move, the fatigue, attrition, and demoralization of the constant hunt led to their surrender. The final 34 holdouts, including Geronimo and Naish, surrendered units of General Miles' forces in September 1886. From Bowie Station, Arizona, they were entrained, along with most of the other remaining Chiricahua, and exiled to Fort Marion, Florida. At least two Apache warriors, Masai and Gray Lizard, escaped from their prison car and made their way back to San Carlos, Arizona in a journey to their ancestral lands. After a number of Chiricahua deaths at the Fort Marion prison near St. Augustine, Florida, the survivors were moved, first to Alabama, and later to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Geronimo's surrender ended the Indian Wars in the United States. However, another group of Chiricahua were not captured by U.S. forces and refused to surrender. They escaped over the border to Mexico, and settled in the remote Sierra Madre Mountains. There they built hidden camps, raided homes for cattle and other food supplies, and engaged in periodic firefights with units of the Mexican Army on police. Most were eventually captured or killed by soldiers or by private ranchers armed and deputized by the Mexican government. Eventually, the surviving Chiricahua prisoners were moved to the Fort Sill Military Reservation in Oklahoma. In August 1912, by an act of the U.S. Congress, they were released from their prisoner of war status as they were thought to be no further threat. Although promised land at Fort Sill, they met resistance from local non-Apache. They were given the choice to remain at Fort Sill or to relocate to the Mescalero Reservation near Riadosa, New Mexico. Two-thirds of the group, 183 people, elected to go to New Mexico, while 78 remained in Oklahoma. Their descendants still reside in these places. At the time, they were not permitted to return to Arizona because of hostility from the long wars. In 1912, many different Apache bands returned to San Carlos Apache lands after their release from Fort Sill Apache Reservation. In the Chiricahua culture, the band as a unit was much more important than the American or European concept of tribe. The Chiricahua had no name for themselves as a people. 
The name Chiricahua is most likely the Spanish rendering of the Opeta word Chihuacahui or Chigakegi for the Chiricahua Mountains, later corrupted into Chiricahui slash Chiricahua. The Chiricahua tribal territory encompassed today's SE Arizona, SW New Mexico, Nebraska, Sonora, and NW Chihuahua. The Chiricahua range extended to the east as far as the Rio Grande Valley in New Mexico and to the west as far as the San Pedro River Valley in Arizona north of Magdalena just below present-day Hoy 40 quarter in New Mexico and with the town Ciudad Madera on the Mexico-United States border, as their southernmost range. According to Morrissey Opeler, the Chiricahuas consisted of three bands. Schroeder lists five bands. The Chiricahua Warm Springs Fort Sale Apache Tribe in Oklahoma say they have four bands in Fort Sale, today they use the word Chidecacu to refer to the Chiricahua in general, and the word Ond, to refer to the Apache in general. Other sources list these and additional bands. The Chokonan, Chien, Nidnhi, and Bidonkahe had probably up to three other groups, named respectively after their leaders or homelands. By the end of the 19th century, surviving Apache no longer identified these groups. They may have been wiped out or had joined more powerful groups. For instance, the remnant of the Carizalino Nidnhi camped together with their northern kin, the Genero Nidnhi. The Carizalino Nidnhi shared overlapping territory in the surroundings of Casas Grandes and Aguanuevas with the Tsebican and, a southern Mescalero band. The Spanish referred to the Apache band by the same name of Tsebican and. These two different Apache bands were often confused with each other. And the Tsifanand of the Mescalero. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.